Well, I don't know what the problem was, but my camera just quit on me. It just stopped whenever I was in the other one, so I just put whatever I found the title to be in the, well, I actually got it twisted around, but anyway, there's some higher powers, powers of the air, that's working to prevent people from knowing the truth. You know, so no doubt that it's probably a lot of things other than just people. But anyway, um, like I said, I was reading from Gail Rippinger's book here, um, In All Thy Word. The, um, let's see here. Understanding the King James Bible with Mystery and History, Letter by Letter. It's Mystery and History, Letter by Letter. And let's see here, it says, And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Exodus 6, 2, and 3. The name of uh, the Lord Jehovah Adonai, uh, uh, the Lord actually, is spelled with the Hebrew letters Yad, He, Vav, He. Read from right to left, then transliterated into English as JHVH, called the Tetragrammaton. In the King James uh, Version of the Old Testament, it is translated Jehovah seven times and rendered Lord the remaining times. And in uh, C. New Age Bible Versions by Gil Ruffinger. And as I was trying to say last time before it just kind of went off, my live just went off. Uh, uh, in the NASB, it says that uh, uh, it just puts Lord. And uh, uh, in some cases, like in Psalm 68 4, when it says his name is Jah, as in uh, not Yah, it just shows Jah, but the um, NASB just shows the Lord. You know, they take Jah out. That's referencing it's not Yah, but it's Jah, like Jehovah. Uh, let's see here. Each of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet paints a picture. The letters of the name of God illustrate the following. Jod, it suggests a giving extended hand. Um, hey, it represents an enclosure like heaven or a window. Uh, ve, or vav rather, it symbolizes a nail. And a V in English, it's a uh, pictogram of a chiseled end of a nail. Hey, again, means it is repeated at the end of the name because Jesus was risen and received up into heaven again. So uh, God reached his hand out of the windows of heaven and he, we put a nail in it. Having taken our punishment for sin, he was returned to heaven. The nail pierced hands of Jesus were foretold in Psalm twenty two sixteen and Isaiah twenty two twenty three through twenty five. Uh, Jesus is a transliteration of the Hebrew word Joshua, meaning Jehovah is salvation. Jesus Christ is shown to be the J in the Jod, the arm of the Lord in Isaiah fifty three one through twelve, and Isaiah fifty nine sixteen, which says, "Therefore his arm brought salvation." Isaiah 63, 2 and 5 repeats this theme. Uh, the jod is a picture of an arm and a an hand drawn in a tiny and compact form. Professor Quaknin, uh, Quaknin, I think his name is, uh, traced the jod from pictograms of a praising upright arm and hand to outstretched arms as if on a cross. And finally, by an arm and a hand reaching down like the letter J, reaching like Jesus to rescue perishing mankind. In the 19th century, as an unbelieving German critics, as unbelieving German German critics of the Bible were hammering away at the Word of God, that they tried to refashion God's name Jehovah. 
they asserted that God of, of Israel, of the God of Israel's name, uh, should be pronounced Yahweh, because to them he was nothing more than an offshoot of the pagan deity Yahu. Nothing could be further from the truth. The Jews, who generally did not, other than the name of God, had used, but ceased using. Uh, the name Jehovah, centuries before the Christian era, notes the classic scholar's edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica. It affirms that reading what actually stood in the text, they would inevitab inevitably pronounce the name Jehovah. Um, let's see here. The new Shafe um, Herzog Encyclopedia admits that in the older system of transliteration Jehovah it is the pronunciation Jehovah it is the pronunciation it states in a Masoretic text the usual form would give the pronunciation at pronunciation as Yehovah it's pronounced Jehovah Let's see here. thousands of years ago perhaps 3600 years ago the name of Jehovah was given by God to Moses it is seen first in Genesis 2 4 in the Hebrew Old Testament and transliterated into Exodus 6 3 in the King James Version. In his scholarly book, a dissert, dissertation concerning the antiquity of the Hebrew language, letters, vowel points, and accounts, John Gill, who was born 1697 and died 1771, eminent theologian and writer documents the use of the very name Jehovah from before 200 BC and throughout the centuries of the early church in the following millennium. The Hebrews Mishnah allowed the name as a salutation. According to the Talmud, the priests in the temple could use the true name, but those in the country could only use Adonai. Uh, Maimonides said the name was used by the priest in the sanctuary and on the Day of Atonement. Even commentators such as Nicholas of Lyra, Tostatus, Cajetan, and Bonferi defended the pronunciation Jehovah as received by Moses on Mount Horeb. The name is found in the writings of Raymond Martin in the 1200s and Forchettus in the 1300s. Theodore and Beza, Galantanus and Cajetan, among many others, use it in the 1500s. Scholars such as Michaelis, Drake, Steer, drew the name as the original. The 1602 Spanish Bible uses the name Jehovah and gave a lengthy defense on the pronunciation Jehovah in his preface. In the 17th century, the pronunciation Jehovah was zealously defended by Fuller, Gattaker, Lewiston, and others against the criticism, critics, the criticisms, rather. Jean Bartos seems to have been the first to suggest the pronunciation Yahweh, or Yahweh, but it, is, um, it was not noted until the 19th century that it became generally accepted. The anti-Semitic anti German liberals like Driver and Delitzsch, 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 or whatever that's called, eagerly grasped a new pronunciation, Yahweh. They and other unsaved higher critics denied that the Old Testament was actually given by God. They grasped at any straw to shelter their unbelief, asserting that the Old Testament was the creation of men who adopted and adapted stories, words, and names from neighboring, neighboring pagan religions and languages. The higher critics uh, used the new pronunciation Yahweh as so-called proof that the God of Israel was nothing more than a tribal god Whose name was whose name had evolved from pagan gods like Yahoo or Yahweh, worshipped by the Babylonian Canaanites, the Hebrews captors and and neighbors. They said Yahweh meant destroyer. The German critics said Yahweh is not a Hebrew name, but they pronounced such a pronunciation would prove the Hebrews borrowed it. Uh, critic Rudolf Kettle 
very important name here. I searched Yahoo does not lead back to a pronunciation represented by Yova or Jehovah, the new Shafe volume 12, page 470. Uh, the critics cited ancient documents like the magical texts, Aramaic papyri, uh, and the Babylonian tablets that fell of pagan that tell of pagan gods named Yahoo and Yahoo and Yahweh. Uh, let's see here. Driver tried to provide as evidence an Ethiopic list of magical names of, for Jesus, which include Yahweh, or sorry, Yahweh. Um, other biblical critics anxious to find a linguistic rather than a supernatural source for the name of God of Israel grasped the Canaanite correction, connection and the new pronunciation. says even the Oxford English Dictionary warns that this origin is now disputed. So let's examine why the critics of Jehovah are wrong. The first letter, Jod, could be pronounced in Hebrew as Ye, in, like in Yeshua, the Hebrew pronunciation of Jesus, but it could not be pronounced that way in English. The English pronunciation and spelling of words which begin with the name in the uh, same Hebrew letter, Jod, and vowel pointing silent Shiva, J, words like Jerusalem, Jer Jericho, Jew, um, break the critics' Canaanite idol, Yahoo, in pieces. It cannot be pronounced Yah in English. The sound of Hebrew letter Jod came to English as the letter I used in a consonant and having the soft G sound like today's J. In the past, the letter I was used as both a vowel sound and as a consonant J sound. The, Q, the OED, Oxford English, Oxford English Dictionary, says that the sound of J, though originally uh, printed as I, was pronounced as a soft G. Oxford English Dictionary and a bridge second edition. The J sound in Jehovah was spelled E and pronounced as G. To distinguish the consonant sound soft G of the letter I from the vowel sound of I, many scribes in the 1200s began putting a tail on the soft G, I making it look like the modern J. The Spanish in the 1500s were the first to more consistently try to distinguish the consonant I, soft G, sound as the shape of a J. At the same time, English printers um, used J and I fonts interchangeably and documented elsewhere, as documented elsewhere in this book. During the 1600s, most languages began consistently using the extended I form, now called a J, to represent the J soft G sound. <clears throat> okay. The Hebrew used Psalm 119 to teach the Hebrew alphabet. Hebrews. Uh, well, Psalm 1973 was used to teach the letter Jod, not Yod. The hand pictogram, interestingly, the first words of the verse 73 are thy hands. These Hebrew letters are shown in the King James Bible printed by the Cambridge University Press. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Uh, give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. The transliteration of the Hebrew letters of the name, the Tetragrammaton, as the Roman letters Yahweh, requires a German accent. J is Yah in German. Invented vowels and a translator who does not know that the Germans who translated it that way pronounce the letter W as V. 
only the Latins, Roman Catholicism, and Germans higher criticism using the Roman alphabet team up to pronounce J as Y. There are no native German words that begin with Y. Even the untrustworthy Hebrew, Aramaic, interlinear Old Testament by J. Green admits the letter J in German is pronounced like an English Y. The bulk of the theological studies having come from German sources, there has been an intermixed uh, usage of English of the J and the Y. Our English translations of the Bible reflect this, so we have chosen to use J, thus Jehovah, rather than Yahweh. Because this is the established English usage for the biblical names, beginning with the Hebrew letter. No one suggests we ought to change Jacob, Joseph, Jehoshaphat, Joshua, etc. So, to begin with a Y, and neither should we, um, to begin with a Y, and neither should we, at this late date, change Jehovah to Yahweh. Okay. In summary, Jehovah and Jesus have always sounded and been pronounced exactly as they are today, as Jehovah and Jesus, although the type fonts used to represent these sounds sometimes look like Jehovah and Jesus with the, uh, with the I on the first of Jehovah and Jesus with the, the U being a V. The letter V is the other disputed consonant in Jehovah, the vowel. It's pronounced like a V in a vehicle, writes Professor Mark Elaine Quakening in the Department of Comparative Literature at the Hebrew bar Elaine University in the Jewish um, Research and Study Center in Paris. Therefore, the ending in the Jehovah would be pronounced in Hebrew and in English as Va, not Way. Professor Quakening also said that the letter Vav went into the Greek alphabet bearing the same digamma uh, and being pronounced V as in vehicle. The Wa in Genesis, German Hebrew grammar other in other Hebrew textbooks is pronounced Vav. In English and the Hebrew readers misunderstand uh, in Hebrew readers misunderstand charts which say pronunciation W, not knowing that their letter W is pronounced as a V in German. That sounds a Vav and a vowel which follows it. Kamet's uh, A can be heard in an instructional Hebrew which cite www.ejemm.com Pronounced exactly as it would by, be in Jehovah. That's a website, www.ejemm.com. -E okay. Even Americans have heard Hogan's Heroes, Sergeant Schultz, I know nothing, <laughs> say to Colonel Clink, Yavol, Commandant. Yavol, Commandant, I love that show. Yavol. Are spelled it's spelled ya with a J. Ya is spelled with J. And wool wool is spelled with a W. So ya wool. Ya wool is not spelled with a Y on the Ya, it's spelled with a J. Wool is spelled with a W, not with a V. Ya wool commandant, meaning yes indeed, commander. In German restaurants. Schultz said in, a, in German what? In German restaurant said uh Wiener uh, Schistnel spelled Wiener Wiener Schistnel uh he listened to the tunes of Wigner spelled Wagner Ludwig von von Beethoven Ludwig von Beethoven and spelled Ludwig van Beethoven. Beethoven. So Ludwig is um 
It's actually Ludwig is actually Ludwig. Von, von is actually spelled a van. The F is a V, not an uh, F. Vik is weak. Um, something about what was um Gene Simmons's name? Vis is oh uh, Vis Hum. Um, oh gosh, his name, his his true name, um, and uh, in, in Israel, his Hebrew name, uh, Kaim, it's Kaim, Kaim, uh, Kaim or Kaim, Chaim or something like that. It's spelled differently, um, like a German Germanic type of thing going on there. Uh. to look it up here um let's see here um in german the letter v is pronounced like an f consequently in the hebrew textbook in the hebrew textbook it was necessary to put the letter w after the hebrew vowel so that german readers would know that the hebrew letter v was the german f sound but the sound of the letter v represented by the letter w English-speaking textbook authors and seminary professors have misunderstood this and misconveyed to their students that the Hebrew letter should be pronounced like the English W, not the German W. Where did the phony way sound in Yahweh come from? As Green said, German sources in German, uh, the V sound is rendered by the W, uh, W, Although the German critics spelled the name Yahweh, they pronounced it Yahweh. Yahweh. Kind of like Yavol, which is like again, Yavol is Ja, Wo, not Yavol. <coughs> In the English, which English is a subsidiary of the Germanic language, but it's different. Totally different in a lot of ways. English sings, I mean, the German sounds very close to the to the uh, French, if you want to know the truth. You know, uh, oh, uh, that's what I always got about it. it. Sounds very close to French because, you know, Germany was so close to France anyway. Um... Because Germans use the letter W for the V sound, those reading or translating German theological works have brought in the German letter W for the V. It is not the um, to be pronounced like the English W, but by, but like a V. Okay, how much I got here? To further compound the confusion, unbelieving Catholic and Bible critics have brought their Latin W pronunciation to the letter V. The Latin V, however, was like the English W early priorings, like a wine, Latin weenum, pronounced as weenum, and a wall, Latin vallum, pronounced wallum. <coughs> wallum, sorry. Wallum, wallum. <coughs> Um, and retain the W sound and are like therefore spelt and are therefore spelt with the W. So we have Latin speaking Roman Catholic scholars and liberal German higher critics joining together to fight World War II against the God uh, of Israel and the Word of God. Even the NIV translators and editors of the corrupt theological. Word book of the Old Testament admit the confusion arises in part because of the past German influence on Hebrew studies. Imagine 19th century anti Semitic German scholars recasting the name of the God of Israel in the mold of Yahoo in a pagan idol. 
which speaks with an untrained German accent. <clears throat> to further compound the confusion, there are two conflicting Hebrew systems of pronunciation. One, the uh, Ashkenazi, a German method from Jews who immigrated to Germany and Central Europe, and then some to America, and two, the classic Sephardi. Uh, where did the vowels in Jehovah come from? Most believe the Bible uh, record, which states uh, that the vowels in Jehovah were heard as the Lord said unto Moses, about my name Jehovah, Exodus 6 3. The statement the Lord said unto Moses is repeated over and over in the book of Exodus, and most heard the pronunciation of the words. Pronunciation of the words. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write in a book, and Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. Uh, Exodus 17 14, uh, 24 4, 34 27, Numbers 33 2. Deuteronomy 31, 9, and 24. The book titles in the King James Version state that the first book, five books of the of Moses are the beginning of the Old Testament. The first book of Moses, called Genesis, in the 1700s, Gill proved that the pronunciation and therefore the vowel sounds of the Hebrew Bible must have been given by God to Moses. He d documents their use century by each century, confirming that they were delivered at Sinai, and according to most ancient Jewish um, authorities, all are wise men with one mouth affirm and profess that the whole law was pointed, vowed, and accented as it came out of the hands of Moses, the man of God. If they were not persistent and present, their invention by man would have been an addition into the word of God and in violation of Deuteronomy 4.2, the word Jehovah had seen had seven later the uh, seven letters for consonants and three vowel points, not two vowels in in Yahweh. Jehovah Yahweh. The summary in, in the cup company didn't it, uh, appendix one, the inspiration in the antiquity of the Jew of the Hebrew vowels. Uh, book that's called and see entire documentation in John Gill a dissertation concerning the antiquity of the, of the Hebrew language letters file points and accents London Keith Fitz Fletcher and Merrill 1767 copies available at AV publication PO box 280 Ararat Virginia zip code 24053 The first vowel in Jehovah is the Shiva, um, a little point thing, printed as two tiny dots. Even those who say that the vowels in Jehovah were chosen by man and come from the word Adonai admit that since the first letter, John, in non guttural Hebrew requires that, a, that the A sound compound Shiva uh, be shortened to the E sound, simple Shiva, thus becoming the vocal Shiva sound. The middle vowel in Jehovah is um, the O. It's printed in the Hebrew as the, the tiny dot, placed over the upper left-hand cover of the uh, consonant. It is called Holum. It represents the O sound not surprisingly, a dot in an O look like a hole. The letter uh, O represents an opening in or hole in English. Even apostates like Clement, writing as early as AD 212, included the middle vowel O sound, o, vowel O, and the vowel, final vowel A. Uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> the last vowel in Jehovah is the vowel point, Kemet's, pronounced A, not E, in AD 212. Clement had Va as the letters of the last syllable. The condensed form of Jehovah is seen in Psalm 68, 
4 as ja, not ya, as ja, and that's why I was talking earlier. If you go to, uh, key, this is the King James Version, of course, but if you go to the NASB, it's not in there. It just says Gordon. Uh, the sounds in the Jehovah parallel closely, uh, closely the, the pronunciation of the Hebrew name of Jesus. Yeshua pronounced Yeshua to avoid the obvious and convicting uh, parallel. Modern Jews pronounce Jesus as Yeshu, a word whose letter imply a curse one. Might the represent might the dot represent the cross? Uh, could the three dots represent the three nail holes? The two dots are the neat and are the near the hand symbol and the third dot above the nail symbol. Some of the documentation John Gill cites is tracing the pronunciation of Jehovah back through the centuries it includes 27, 277 B.C., A.D. 70, um, A.D. 120, uh, A.D. 200, uh, let's see, A.D. 250. Origin quotes the Hebrew reading of Psalm 118, uh, 25 and 26, which uses Jehovah three times and agreeable to the present pronunciation, punctuation rather, by vowels, by which it is the evident that the Jews point it as they do now. Jerome um, 8380 um, says indeed that the word Jehovah was in his lifetime found written. 8927, Sendea, Gan's book on the Hebrew vowel, vowels points, one point cited that the vows of Jehovah, the vows of Jehovah. Gill's documentation was very well known to the conservative Christian scholars of his day. Uh, this is evidenced by the 1753 edition of the Chambers Cyclopedia or Supplement. It cites that the, a Jehovahist, as one who holds the uh, vow points annexed to the word. Jehovah in Hebrew represent the actual vows of the word. You know, it's like Jehovah's Witnesses are not called Yah Yahweh Witnesses, are they? they called Jehovah's Witnesses, right? And that's another Bible that's wrong. But yet they call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Their New World Translation, the Bible's wrong, of course. Who hatched the vows in the new imaginary name um, Yahweh? The pronunciation Yahweh relies upon made up vowel sounds. It ignores those seen in every point in the Hebrew Bible and used for thousands and thousands of years by both Christians and both Jews and Christians. The Catholic Cyclopedia ever ready to perpetrate, perpetrate any theory that discredits the Holy Bible and promote their church fathers and traditions reveals that the Cockatrice eggs, vowel sounds A and E, were laid by uh, the Theodoret, by Theodoret, in the fifth century. Not familiar with Hebrews, Hebrew Theodoret used Assyrian Jabe. Uh, let's see here, Theodoret. I'll do that. Uh, over 1,500 years later, German high critics and Catholic scholars uh, inserted the vowels Jabe. A and E into the consonants in J H V H to launch the name, hatch the name, Jave, Jave, or that is. This um, broke into a viper called Yahweh, and a hand of English speaking writers, at the hand of English speaking writers, um, untrained in German and Latin pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Boast concerning the vowels of Jave or Yahweh, whatever you want to call it, into the original Hebrew consonant text, we obtain the form Yahweh or Yahweh. Catholic Encyclopedia says all this. The oracles of God were not committed for the safekeeping to the Syrians. 
but to the Hebrews. Uh, Romans 3, 2. The name Yahweh is found founded upon nothing stronger than a tissue of error woven by the following Bible critics. The Dorit. Again, taught churches the cult of the saints and supplied them with relics. He pronounced anathema upon the Storius and upon all who call not upon the Holy Virgin Mother of God. He could not read Hebrew, but called God Yahweh. Yahweh. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what the book was. That was called The New Shaft. Shaft. Talking about um, Theodore. Unbelieving Bible critics in the 19th century merged the vowels of Yahweh with J-H-B-H, ignoring every vowel pointed Hebrew manuscript and printed um, edition that had ever existed. Kind of like what people do today. They don't care who wins their, any elections. They go on board anyway. They don't care about the laws and or anything like that. They're going to get their way no matter what, even if it breaks the law. Um, Non-German and non-Latin speaking writers copied the Bible of critics. W, not realizing that in the critics language it represents the Hebrew and English V sound. Um, the web will drag and drop you at the sites like the uh, House of Yahweh. Their backstreet God impersonated Yahweh and his understudy Yeshua will give you their impression of Jehovah and Jesus using their script, a corrupt Bible version called the Book of Yahweh. The cert curtain drops on their act and when the spotlight reveals the Shaky linguistic stage they have set. Not only is the name Yahweh incorrect, the hybrid hybrid um, hybrid hype Hebrew noise Yahshua has never been the Hebrew pronunciation of the name Jesus. Neither in the Bible's day, in, in, neither in the Bible's days, nor in the modern Hebrew. The word Jesus is a direct transliteration of the letters from the Hebrew to Greek to English. Uh, the scriptures spell a warning against the use of these other sage names derived from the names of pagan gods like the Canaanites, Yahoo. And make no mention of the names of other gods, neither let them let it be heard out of thy mouth. Don't want to even express it. Exodus 23.13 Even Newsweek magazine has noticed that the Ancient pagan gods like Yahoo and uh, are being resurrected to replace God the Father. Their article, Hallowed Be Thy Name, observed. Uh, Most Christians and Jews still pray to God as Father, but not for long. If feminist theologians, well, I think that's why they kicked me on the uh, on the uh, TikTok because I was talking against feminists and theologians have their way in their determination to be inclusive. Many mainline Protestants are busy excising all mention of paternal deity from hymns and prayer books. New Age Jews are edging toward the use of Yah instead of Jehovah. For the ineffable name of the Lord, partly as an effort to wipe out any lingering association with the masculine gender. Of course they are. That's one of the things they do now. Acting as agents for Yahoo, mainline publishers like Zonovan House print whole Bibles like the interlinear, interlinear NIV Hebrew English Old Testament with impressions of Yahweh on page after page. The preface says it may be the use of Yahweh in those works which will encourage your reader to use the personal name Yahweh in prayer. And there's a song now, it's called Yo Yahweh, Yahweh, and I forgot the old name of the song, but yeah, it's it's becoming a big thing now. You see it on TikTok, you see it in, on, uh, on here, and uh, Instagram, and YouTube, and Twitter, and everywhere else. 
Instead of the Lord, this is a slick way for the devil to hide the common identity of Jesus, the Lord of both the New Testament and the Old Testament. Ephesians 4, 5 says, There is one Lord, Jesus born, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. John 5, 43. Does this interlinear as linguist Dr. Isaac Wilson warns simply give voices to the spirits of the anti-Semitic pre-Nazi movement of de- Sacralizing Hebrew found in the less kinds of Genesis driver. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what this is asking. Okay, yeah, question mark after that. Study of today's Hebrew Old Testament text, less kinds, grammars, and reference the words draw the sheep. Um, study pastors, Christians, and so called. Students, pastors, Christians, and so-called Hebrew scholars are away into dangerous enemy territory, sheet by sheet. Uh, these reference, book, reference books shear away the Christian's confidence in his Bible. The primary sources for all Hebrew studies were created and edited by the unbelieving German higher critics. Wilhelm Guinnesses and Rudolf Kettle. Rudolf Kettle edited... <laughs> Rudolf Kettle edited and changed the Hebrew Old Testament text. It is now printed and edited as Biblica Hebraica Stuart Gensia in Stuart, Stuart um, Germany. Even secular scholars admit Kettle was liberal and anti Semitic. Yale University Press author Robert B. Erickson wrote. Uh, the political orientation of the Kittle family, father and son, represents a pattern that is probably quite typical. The other elder Rudolf Kittle's feet were firmly planted in 19th century liberal academia. Rudolf Kittle's career possibly even presaged his son's later entanglement in the Jew, Jewish question. Son Gerhard was tried and imprisoned for war crimes for acting as Hitler's propaganda high, high priest. <clears throat> Rudolf Kettle agreed that the uh, concept of Yahweh had changed over the years. Rudolf Kettle also advised Jews that at some point that, uh, that some elements in their Talmud were objectionable and that this might be an, an appropriate time for divesting their religious literature of such passages. He found in the difficult uh, he found it difficult to fully accept the autonomy and worth of Judaism. Of course he did. Imagine an old testament altered by an anti Semitic German. The NIV, T N I V, N K J V, N A S B, H C S B, E S V and all new versions are based oh, on this corrupt Hebrew text, the New American Standard Bible, updated edition. In the present translation, the latest edition of Rudolf Kettle's Biblical Hebraica has been employed, the New American Bible um, says. Uh, let's see here. In any KJV, all its versions have, and all new versions have translated their own Old New Testament from a text called, edited by Kettle, a man who believed the Hebrew religion was a cult whose followers worship a primitive weather god, Kettle said. The origin of Yahweh worship is it appears that this cult was established before Deborah. This Yahweh appears as an old deity of Sinai. Revered in untold antiquity as a weather god. Wilhelm Genesis and his Hebrew let's kind and grammar, grammar rather, are the foundation for all current Hebrew reference books. Confusion multiplied because Genesis Hebrew let's kind letter W equals V sound was translated into English by Edward Robinson with a Latin edition. Letter W versus equals B sound. 
the Robinson edition was then edited by the liberals, arch liberals, and higher critics, Brown, Driver, and Briggs. Guinness's Hebrew grammar was translated into English by liberals G.W. Collins and A.E. Cowley. And see here, modern Hebrew textbooks and reference works include the Hebrew <laughs> lexicon in the back of the Strong's Coordinates. Merely plagiarized these works and passed the plague to a new generation of unsuspecting Bible students. Many follow, many follow the precarious ways of these false teachers who deny the Lord, of whom the way of the truth is evil spoken of. Second Peter two one through three. Modern authors mean uh, modern authors have not found it their focus rather their linguistic or spiritual microscripts to see the germs in these German works. Nor do the editors like Armstrong, Busby, Carr, Davison, Holiday, that's probably Tom Holiday, a cousin of mine, will spell the same way. I cannot believe this. Well, I'm the Holiday, and it doesn't go what that Holiday goes as. I, I'm, I'm for God's Word, not against it. Uh, Wilson, Beale, Banks, Smith, Mitchell, Lightfoot, Kelly, Lambden, C.O., Walt, Harris, Archer, Jenny, Claus, Owens, Price, and O'Connor seem to know enough about etymology, history, language, and German to filter out the theological prejudices woven into the works by these unbelievers. Do your reference books repeat the modern era about Jehovah? The long war against God is not over. The summary, the connection... Yahweh at Yahoo.com is not even virtual reality. How the connection between Jesus and Jehovah is salvation can be seen and heard in both English and Hebrew. Salvation. Mm. When God's name is pronounced Jehovah, unbelievers have no etymological basis to claim that the God of Israel is simply another tribal God. We trust not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, reference books about the Bible languages and theology, but which the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost teacheth, rather. 1 Corinthians 2.13 What does the Holy Bible say? It says, Jehovah, thy word is truth. John 17.17 17. Okay, not far now. <coughs> Appendix 1 the inspiration and antiquity of the Hebrew vows. Using the scriptures themselves, i.e. Matthew 5.18, and direct quotations from ancient Jewish authorities and secular historians and grammarians, John Gill, Spurgeon's favorite scholar, traces the authenticity of the Hebrew Bible vows century after century back to Moses at Sinai and even to Adam. Gill cites that a wicked and blasphemous readings produced by a Bible without vowels, page 265, some combination and consonants could be used to create up to ten different words. In Lamentations 3.33, a Hebrew text without vowels might produce a text charging God with insincerity, saying he both he doth not answer from his heart orderly and sincerely. The true reading is for he doth not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. <clears throat> in verb connotations, the qual would signify answer in peel, afflict, which is the correct vowel pointing. Jewish synagogues prefer Bibles without vowels because it allows them to spoil the famous prophecy of the Messiah in Isaiah 9 6, where instead of everlasting father, the prince of peace, they translated, I will bring upon them the prince's peace. Bring upon them the prince's peace. You know, and it does, it does say in the Bible, not one jot nor one tittle shall be removed to be all be fulfilled. So every word of God, every word, every jot, every tittle, it means something. So 
So if you change it, it means something else. So that's why it's important not to change God's word. Or receive unto yourself damnation if you do. In Psalm 711, the Hebrew Bible and the King James Version in the King James Version read, God is angry. And in the point it takes might read, it's not angry. Because the word sometimes used for God, which different vowels can mean not. Mm, yeah. In Isaiah twenty four twenty three, the Hebrew and King James reading, the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed. Uh, might become the brick wall shall waste and the wall shall fall. Moon with different vowels can mean brick. Sun uh, she could become wall. Those vowels are important. First Kings five eighteen, the Hebrews and the King James builders could become sons by simply changing the vowels. Uh, let's see here. Without vowels, the difference can't be discerned between vowel nouns and verbs. Between verbs active and verbs passive, between some conjugation conjug, conjugations, moods, tenses and persons, cow, pill, puel, imperatives and infinitives are proofs hereof. Nor can the vowel conversive of tenses be observed, uh, which it is used frequently throughout the Bible, and without which the formation of some of the tenses by letters would be useless. Gill proves that the synagogue copies became unpointed without vowels, that is, not only as a means to suppress the messianic prophecies, but because of the influence of the occult Kabbalists. And those who have not got into the, those who have got into the allegorizing uh, way of interpreting the scriptures, these magicians levitate and juggle the letters they do not like because by using an unappointed no vowel word, a man may understand in many ways. That is ambiguous. That men may not be tied down to one sense of a word. This private interpretation is expressly forbidden in the scriptures. Second Peter one twenty. Because of twain moth twain. The scribes and Pharisees, just as Jesus warned, were afraid that when they found or got a perfect law, a copy with points and accents, they would deny that they had any further use of tradition, i.e. for the explanation of it. Um, hence, the synagogue copies began to be written without vowels. Their com com uh, contemporary counterparts Catholics hoped that they would reject the points or the vowels and then as the words would be subject to various senses without them. And some contrary to each other, they would at last be convinced. Good mercy. the track buddy get on down the track he's gonna probably stop here pretty soon and drop off a cart on ADM here um, then as words would be subject to various senses without them and some contrary to each other they would at last be convinced of the necessity of one infallible interpreter of scriptures, the Pope. The Pope. Gill records one papist who wrote that he did not believe that the vows were in God's originals because it was his will that every man should be subject to the judge of the church, the Catholic Church. No. That the people should depend on the priest. 
No. So even in the today's seminary textbooks, the myth is presented that the Masoretes added the vowels to the Bible in the 10th century. Gill proves this wrong. The truth of the matter with respect to the Masoretes is that the pointing vowels of the Bible uh, was not their work. They considered it a divine original. It, they considered it as a as a, a divine original. Johannes Buxtorf, one of history's most illustrious Hebraists, defended the inspiration of the vowels in its classic publication, Tracatus de Pronunci Tracatus de Punctuum Origine Antiquitae et Authoritet Apostolus Africano Punctianus Revelato Ludo Voci Capelli or something like that. It was written to defend and elaborate upon and elaborate upon a similar book by his renowned father Johannes Booktorf Books Booksorf Senior entitled Tiberius Sive Commentarius Masoreticus. Okay. His father had been soundly proved wrong. Elias Levatus views regarding the uh, late origin of the Hebrew vowel points. The Encyclopedia Britannica says that his son's provocation was written for the reformers and was used to prove the bicopious citations from the rabbinical writers and by arguments of various kinds that the points or vowels possessed authority of divine interpretation. The encyclopedia says further, having renounced the dogma of an infallible church, it was it deemed necessary to maintain as a counterpose not only that of an infallible Bible, but as the necessary foundation of this of a Bible which had been handed down from the earliest ages without the highest, with the, without the slightest textual alteration. Even the vowel points and accents were held to have been given by divine inspiration. When we realize that all that all the texts and the words of the in the King James Bible have at their root the goal of usurping the authority of the Word of God and replacing it with, it with that of uh, some man, whether priest, rabbi, a scholar, Bible teacher, uh, textbooks, or sex. That's what's happening. They're trying to replace God's Word with things they are not to be replacing it with. Well, that's it for that. That's it for that chapter. So, Every word that God has put in his word, the Bible, is meant to be there for a reason. You change it up, you take it out, you put add this or add that, and take that out, take this out. You change it to something else that he didn't say. And that's one reason the Catholic Church is wanting to control everybody and everything. And it's like, oh, well, hey, well, we, we you come to us. We'll, we'll teach you what it says. No. Anyway, again, this is an all thy word. Understand the King James Bible. It's mystery and history, letter by letter. Um, Gail Rippinger. Good book. Um, anyway, that's it. I'm surprised Instagram let me go this far. I hope TikTok will do the same later. Hopefully they turn my uh, suspension around. Because I went ahead and deleted the... Uh, the video because I can say something a little bit better being I read the thing. This is my second time reading that. Alright, we'll see you later. God bless.